Hi guys, welcome back. It's me, Christine. Today we're painting a lovely evening sunset scene with gorgeous reflections on the water. I'm working on a 16 by 11 canvas and I'm in acrylics today. So I'm using my flat brush to start off. I'm working on a tonal background that I painted previously and let it dry. And I'm just going in with all my beautiful red colours you can see here. Some deep cadmium red, some vermilion and some magenta. I'm just getting the actual reflections in, which is at the bottom of the painting. Then obviously my sky at the top. So I'm just darkening some areas now. I've just gone in with Payne's Grey here. It's not totally dark, dark. It's just a nice Payne's Grey and a tiny little bit of white just to scoot across so I can get my reflections on. Now I'm putting my tree reflections in because obviously I know where my trees are going to go. On the land, obviously. So I'm just getting them in in the water. I'm just using a flat brush. Any brush you're comfortable with, I always said that, don't have to be the same brush as me, you can use any brush. So I've let that dry and I'm just going over a nice wash of that Payne's Grey again. Just right over the red colours and the dark colours that I put in for the tree reflections. It's a nice thin layer. I've added a touch of purple there as well. Now the same principle again with a nice Payne's Grey, but I'm going to different tones here from the dark to the light. So I want a lighter area in the centre and the, and the darker bits on the outside of the painting. And this is a quite rough action. I'm just actually really blocking it in. I'm not really doing any overblending work. So I want a quite moody sky, but not a misted out sky, if you will. I want them clouds to be visible. So it can react with the dark colours because it's about a contrast paint in this as well today. So I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please like this video and maybe share it out. Also, you can put it into your playlist and save them as well. So that's dry and I'm coming back in with the red. So I'm going in between the cadmium red, the deep red and the vermilion and some magenta. So I'm just to and fro in and obviously... A bit of peach colour there that I've put in the bottom of the mountain, near the mountain. Another thin glaze over my water and then I dry that and then a thin glaze right over the sky again with some just pure magenta. So make sure everything's dry before you do this or it'll smudge the underpainting. And can you see how that glazing just softens things anyway? So that's why I won't worry too much at the beginning about it being too blocky. So obviously try and follow what's in the sky into your reflections, but it doesn't have to be super paired up. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a marriage or anything. Uh, just get it similar. So here I've gone in with a dark phthalo green. With a tiny little bit of blue added to that, just to block in my mountains. Obviously, it is night time, going night, evening, dusk, whatever you want to call it. So just a nice dark colour that you've got. Well, I quite like the phthalo green because it looks really nice because we've got the popper red in there. Obviously, red and green are complements, so that's why I picked the phthalo green. But if you haven't got that, you just use a regular dark colour. That is a tiny bit of magenta into that uh, mountain there that you saw. Back again, doing another layer, just getting the darks and the lighter greys in on the water. To give more that more depth and that more realistic feel. A nice thin wash of that as well. Let me get another layer because reds are really great. If you can layer them up, you can get a nice vivid colour. But some of most of them are transparent, so you do have to work in layers. So I've now gone with a bluey white colour, a grey colour, whichever you want to call it. It's just an off white tinted with some blue, just to get some bits of snow on them hills there. And at the bottom, I've just got my stiff brush and misted it out a little bit. So I've gone to a stiff bristle brush now, which is a flat brush. 
And these are awesome just to get some dry brushing techniques in because you can put a little bit of paint on and it goes a long way when you're dry brushing with these stiff brushes. So I like them to do that work with as well. So you see me to and fro and putting more darks in, putting more lights in, especially on the snow area. Now I'm putting my actual foliage here that's on the riverbank that will match up to the reflections in the water. Like I said, they don't have to be perfect. So I swapped here to my fan brush. Now I'm putting this dark value in, as you can see here. Just the same colour paint that I used for the underpainting. Now I've lightened it with a tiny bit of a yellowy green colour. But that all disappears, as you can see. Now what was happening there, that's why I've left it in to show you this uh, example. It was like a bit of a nice purpose thing I had to do for you, just to show you. There was no contrast. You couldn't see the trees. There was nothing showing up. It was just totally wrong. And I know a lot of people saying, what's wrong with my paintings? Um, a majority of it is there's no contrast. So I left that in on purpose. I didn't edit it out so you could see what I was talking about. So I said, I'll come back in and cover things up like I did there. But dry it off first and then just go back in and did what I did before I had in the snow. Because that's dark. I mean, you can't do it too light, the mountains, because it's a nighttime scene. And you can't do your trees too light, so it just won't fit in with the painting. But any questions about contrast, about any paintings you've done, leave me a comment or join my Facebook group. And I'm in there, I'm active in the group regularly. You can drop a comment in there and I will definitely see it. Because you can also tag me in it and I'll definitely see it as well. So now I've gone with a nice bluey grey there. So I've just added a bit of phthalo blue and a tiny bit of white. Just put on them distant mountains. And now I've gone with my airbrush. So I've just given it a quiet mist. Now we can put the trees in. And now we've got the contrast. So the dark trees on the dark wasn't showing up unless it was in the skyline, obviously, into the red. Which is no good. And you can't keep going light just putting a lot of snow on the trees because that would contrast again. It wouldn't fit in with reflecting with the snow on the mountain. So it just all melts and blend into one. And now you can see the trees clearly and the hills at the back. You don't have to use an airbrush either. You could have just used some mixing white and did a quick layer over so you could uh, have the same effect. It was just easier for me because my airbrush is there ready just to give it a quick spray. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment and uh, I'll definitely get back to you. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, I always ask you, if you don't mind, just giving us a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And I know a lot of you share them out, uh, my videos, and I appreciate everybody that does that. And I do know you all are. It's really great. And thank you. I'm just darkening my shadows again. I'm just giving another darkness. Now I've dried that off and I've come over with a tiny little tint of purple there just to scoot like a bit of ice over the water. And I've gone back to my nice peachy colour. And that paints grey again just to get some more contrast in that sky. It wasn't dramatic enough for me so I've gone back in and added another layer. As long as everything's dry, you can keep going back in, keep changing things, it's not a problem. So just remember to just dry everything off, and then your painting's not going to get muddied up because you've dried it. And just keep experimenting. So I'm now using my fan brush because it gives me lovely textures on the grasses, and I like using this brush. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I hope you got some value out of this video, and I appreciate you everybody visiting. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.
On screen now are two videos you may like to watch and if you're not already subscribed, click on my face and be sure to click the icon bell to get a notification. As always, thanks for watching and create something wonderful. See you all soon on my next video.